Hi guys, it's Emma, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here then hello, nice to meet you. I'm a full-time singer-songwriter musician type, and this is where the music happens. I have another channel on here just called Hi It's Emma, where the chaos happens. I do two main forms of content over there. Every Monday I put out art or fashion or makeup related videos, and on Saturdays I put out social commentary style videos, essay style analytical videos. But this is the music channel, so if you're looking for the music then you are in the right place. Usually on here I mostly just post videos of me singing, covers, and stuff to do with my own original music, but recently I have been doing this series called Emma Learns Logic. This is the fourth installment now in this series. The first one isn't really worth watching, but the second and the third are much more me actually doing stuff and learning logic properly. But basically the basis of this series is that I am trying to teach myself music production. I have downloaded the free trial version of Logic Pro X that I've been using and I've been trying to learn about music production because I always wanted to be able to do actual recording and production work and I never wound up pursuing it to uni or anything like that so now I'm trying to catch up on all that and teach myself those skills so that I can improve my general content. Anywho, so for this series I've been re-recording one of my old covers, which is Twit by Hwasa, and so far we have done making a guide track, then adding drums to that guide track. I faffed about with acoustics and recorded the acoustic guitar parts and the vocal parts. And now finally we're adding the finishing touches this week and I finished off the bass part that I'd sort of kept starting and not quite finishing in the other previous installments. But this week I actually finished off the bass part. I added an electric guitar part. I added a basic pad synth to the track as well, and I've made a slight start on trying to balance out the levels, literally just using the sliders for now to try and balance out the levels on each of the tracks, get everything at roughly the right volume. I haven't started on automation or anything like that yet. So that's what I did this week. Let's start with the bass part. So I already had this first chorus part that was already in. I think I said in the drums video that I was gonna wind up changing this, and in the end I haven't actually changed it that much. There's a slight tweak to it versus what it was before. I think I literally just took a couple of notes out and elongated a different note, and that I found worked better. And then in the verses, I have kept the bass part extremely simple because I knew I didn't want it to overwhelm everything else that was going on. There's quite a lot else going on in this track and the bass really just wants to sit in the background there. Whereas in the choruses, I really wanted that oomph. So I've gone for a bass part that's doing a bit more of a melody there and that I will probably mix louder in the track when I come to actually do all the mixing stuff this week that will probably be louder in the track in the choruses than it will in the verses. The bass and the bridge part I think is actually the most interesting bit of this because I completely changed up what notes I was using for it. Like you can see here, I was using this same pattern going down into the deeper notes for both the chorus and the verses, but in the bridge part, I decided to end up using a pattern that actually went up to some higher notes and then back down again. And I like that better there because I felt like it was just a bit softer, you know? Anyway, bass part was sorted. I moved on to recording some electric guitar in to have a play around with. I decided I wanted electric guitar on the chorus parts because I really wanted that contrast of, I wanted it to stop after this intro bit, then wham chorus happens. And I wanted that wham chorus, wham chorus, but like a bam chorus, chorus is here. <laughs> but I also decided to go with some gently strummed chords for the bridge part as well and put a little bit in there. And I think that really works quite well. I just used the power chords because I literally just wanted some electric guitar just to beef out the track. So I haven't played around with trying to put any riffs on. I may well get the electric guitar back out later on down the line when I'm mixing and I'm hearing more what other parts I might want to throw on. I may want to add a little riff or something in there, particularly in that second verse maybe, just to add a bit of contrast and interest there. I don't know, but I've decided not to mess around with that this week. This was just me adding some electric guitar to really beef up the track. And I think it sounds way better now that the electric guitar is on because it really sounds rounded out in those choruses. So obviously to do the guitar, I plugged the guitar straight into my interface and ran it through the amp designer that you get on Logic because as I mentioned in last week's video, I only have a basic gear for music amp. I don't have any fancy pedals or amps at all. So it's not really great for recording at all. So I decided to just DI it straight in and apparently you can get some really quite good sounds with the amp designer and you can really tweak the sound and the tone to be very specific and not just you either have this amp or this amp, you can really tweak different bits of the setup. Anyway, so I was just gonna pick a random one, but I wound up cycling through them for quite a while, and I wound up landing on one that then, when I came back to go through the amps later and pick one out to actually be my final choice, 
I basically went with what I'd already picked to do the recording in. Like I've tweaked it slightly, but I did pick the main overall setup initially and then you have the option to change out different bits of the amp setup. So you've got the amp head and you've got the other bit that I've forgotten what it's called now. The stack. It's the one. And I changed the stack. So it originally had both the amp head and the stack were from... Okay, yeah, so basically I originally had both the boutique retro amp and stack together and I went through the stacks for ages trying to pick one out because I quite liked the set because I just went through all the bog standard setups, the main setups for different amps and I decided that this was definitely the one that was closest to the tone that I was going for but I wanted something that sounded... it didn't sound as full or as... Um, light as I wanted it to. It was a bit too heavy and not really heavy is not the right word. It was a bit too grungy with not enough filling the room and feeling like there was air around it, if that makes any sense. But I cycled through and I decided I really liked the sunshine amp sound, especially this bigger one, the 4 times 12 was definitely better than the the 1 times 12. I really like the sound of that because I felt like it made it fuller without making it really big and beefy sounding. Like I wanted a bit of beef to it, but I didn't want it to be a really big beefy cow, you know? I wanted a bit of fluffiness, like a big sheep rather than a cow. And I then cycled through the microphones and I didn't think this was gonna make that much of a difference because I was listening to it over, I was watching a YouTube video of someone doing this. And when I was listening to them cycling through the different microphones, like I couldn't really hear the difference in the sounds they were getting. But when I was actually doing it myself and listening to my own sound through my headphones properly, obviously you're gonna get you're gonna get a better you're gonna be able to hear it better really that. I don't know if you guys can hear it as well when I'm cycling through them here, if you can actually hear any differences. <laughs> As I was cycling through, I found the dynamic microphones gave it a bit of presence back that it had lost when I changed the amp stack. But the di using the dynamic microphone kind of gave it that presence and that clarity back that it didn't have with the ribbon microphone. Again, I don't know if people can hear that at all. And I decided to just move it ever so slightly more towards the center of the speaker as well. I thought that that sounded better, sounded clearer and still had that beefiness to it without being too beefy again. Anyway, so I've had a play around with the amp designer this week and I've gotten my head around it and I've been going through and I've learned a lot about how guitars actually, I've actually learned about what the difference is between all these different parts that go together for putting up, putting together a guitar amp and how changing the microphone you've got and putting it in different places around. I mean, again, I figured that putting the microphone in different places and having different microphones obviously is gonna change the sound but actually playing around with this and being able to design my own setup and play around with the different sounds you can get from different setups has helped me to get my head around why you might make certain decisions when recording guitar. Obviously, I would still need to practice it a lot and get used to it, and I'm probably gonna play around with this amp designer in future and try out lots of different sounds and see what they sound like to get to know a bit more about what electric guitar can sound like on a track without having to invest in loads of gear to play around with that. I haven't touched the pedal board yet because I figured it was probably best to do other mix stuff first and then come back to tweaks like pedal board because from what I can tell, people use pedals to do a lot of adding effects on and stuff that you do with um, adding plugins on the other tracks. So for my vocal, if I wanna add some compression to it, I'm gonna add a compression plugin, but for my guitar, for this electric guitar here, I might wanna mess about with a compression pedal instead. May even wanna throw a compression pedal on some of my vocal tracks or something as well. Who knows, we'll see. So I figured it was best to leave that until I was dealing with the overall mix this week, which is what we're gonna start on this week. We're really gonna put away all the recording stuff and we're gonna just sit on the sofa mixing this week. <laughs> but I did also just add on one more instrument that I knew I definitely wanted, which was a pad synth. I went with the dark pad, which I think works pretty perfectly as is. I may tweak the sound a little bit and I just added it in throughout the track. Again, it's doing more complicated stuff in the chorus than it is 
in the verses, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, it's doing more complicated stuff in the choruses than it is the verses. And same with the bridge. The bridge is, in fact, the choruses and the bridge all have the same parched thing through them, basically. I kept it really simple. It's mostly just a lot of long notes, the roots of whatever chord is playing at that moment, mostly. And I've just put it in there to add an extra bit of atmosphere to the background throughout the track. I think it really helps with that, but I do think that I may want to tweak this sound somewhat to make it maybe take up a bit less space, just be there in the background a bit more with the mixing. So if anybody has any advice for how I would do that, how to make this sound retreat into the background even more, let me know. Finally, the last thing I did, as I said, was I just started working on the balancing of the track overall, because I read in one of the many articles I've been reading about overall production and mixing and stuff that before one person's opinion this is, I don't know, other people may have different opinions, but this particular article said that before they even touch any of the effects plugins that they start off by just balancing out the track and using automation to try and get the volumes as close to perfect as they can without adding any effects on, trying to get it as professional sounding as possible before you put any compression or EQ or any of that stuff on. So I decided to just have a quick play around with trying to get the levels as balanced out as possible. So this is what the track currently sounds like. And that is all I've done to it so far, is just add all those parts on and balance it out. So I think the first thing I'm probably gonna do this week is to continue to tweak the balancing and the automation on it, start on actually using automation to balance it out throughout the track. If anybody already has some feedback about that, like if there's anything you think is sitting a bit too high in the mix, or if you think that something needs taking down in a certain bit of the song, let me know. But the main thing I'm gonna want advice on for this week is what do you start with when you do your mix? Where do you begin? I'm assuming, based on everything I've read, that my best place to start is EQ and then compression, in that order. You start with EQ and then you do compression and then you add other stuff and then you do more EQ and more compression. Apparently you do loads of EQ and compression as well. Lots of different layers to that. I'm probably gonna be doing lots of reading on EQ and compression for that reason and just starting out trying to get my head around about what I'm looking for and what I should be listening for for changes and what type, how to actually use all the different types of EQ because there are so many different types of EQ plugin you can use. Any resources or advice you have on compression and EQ in the comments as always. And if you just wanna share like, how do you go about mixing vocals, mixing acoustic guitar, mixing drums, whichever part it is. I'm probably gonna start with the vocals and the guitar and really focus on them first. They're the ones I'm probably gonna be mixing most in future, let's face it. So they're the ones I should probably try and get my head around best. In the end of the day, my drums are just, uh, sample that already has a load of effect plugins on it anyway. Should I just take all those off and start from fresh as well? Should I leave them on and just tweak them? Or should I just take them off and try going from a complete blank? I don't know if we, I don't know which one of those would be better and more helpful. So if anybody has an opinion on that, let me know. But yeah, basically this week we start on the mix with compression and EQ and let me know what order you do things in, what plugins you particularly like to use, any particular EQ tricks you like to use on certain instruments, what are your go-tos, that sort of thing. And most importantly, as always, any resources you recommend me going and having a look at and reading up on to get my head round the first phase of mixing. The current version of the track will be playing more clearly on the end screen for you to really get a listen to, and obviously it's playing in the background now as well, so hopefully you'll get a good idea of what it's starting to sound like. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button, leave a comment letting me know, maybe share it with your friends, and if you wanna see what's gonna keep happening with this series and how the track turns out when I'm finished with it, then you better hit that subscribe button so that you get those weekly updates that I'm doing and so that you hear the final version, which should come out before the end of the year, before the end of December. I'm hoping to put up a video of me actually doing the final version of the song, at least lip syncing to the final version of the song because I've already recorded the vocals, so. I'm also gonna be releasing new music in the new year. So not only should you subscribe to this channel so that when the amazing music video I have planned for that comes out, 
your hair ready for it. But you should also check out all of my social media, which will be linked in the description below, so you can keep up with updates about when things are coming. And you can check out my EP that's already on all the different streaming platforms and find me on there and then follow me on whichever streaming platform it is you use, especially if you use Spotify, because we artists, we do love to make a big push for Spotify. Nothing against any of the other streaming services, it's just the Spotify is the one a lot of people use, and it is one that's really easy for artists to push themselves on in a way that some of the others aren't. The, the way that you're able to run your profile on Spotify is just easier, sorry, it just is. Anyway, that'll be linked in the description below, so if you want to go and follow me on those and listen to what music I already have out so you get an idea of what I actually put out there, please do. And finally, if you really want to support me at the moment, one of the best things you can do is you can check out one of my streams on sessionslive.com. Sessions is a live streaming platform just like things like Twitch, but it's specifically for musicians. I stream live on there every Tuesday and Wednesday evenings from 7 p.m. UK time, and then I do occasional other times, like this week I did, I'm doing Friday, tomorrow, 12 p.m., and Sunday, 12 p.m., midday. My profile will be linked in the description below, and there are ways that you can help me on there both by actually sending me money in the form of tips we call love, in streams or you can also join my crew and then you can complete missions by collecting stars and stuff that earn me points there are missions you can complete on there completely for free so there are ways that you can help me earn points that help me earn money in the future and earn cash prizes and stuff like that but that you can do completely for free if you want to as well so if you want to support me that's one of the best things you can do for me at the moment is head over there and join my crew plus my streams are fun check out one of the highlights videos i've put up on here and you'll see just how fun they can be anyway that's all for this week guys i shall head off and into the mixing hole now i look forward to hearing any feedback you guys have from this week and i shall see you next week with another update bye <laughs> I don't like it, nobody like it